being here with us it's me and the crab trees Yay. i just enjoy saying your names pluralized like it, it makes the me happy trees. the crab trees thank you guys for joining us make sure that as you're hopping on that you comment tell us who you are where you're watching from so that way we can say hello to you like johnny is on but today johnny got beat for the first comment today it went to kevin kevin beat johnny so i think it was like by a second yeah like it wasn't by much I, I need to go back and look. But Kevin says, good afternoon, What's Right fam. Thank you for hopping on. Share the broadcast. It's going to be a good one. And it's also going to be a really entertaining beginning. because Especially for us. Yes, because what Buddy and Serena walked into was me saying, guys, I have an idea. <laughs> and we're making it happen right now. We are doing, we're not doing questions. But we have a, a very big food challenge that we need your opinion on. I hear all the time that store brand versus name brand, like which one's better. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to let you know. We are going to be doing a food challenge of which one is the best. Oh, so, we're doing which one's the best one. I'm trying to like figure out well, if we know which is which. Well, I think that we're trying to figure it out, but I also feel like we will end up discovering which, which one, one we better. like best. That's true. Makes sense. Gotcha. So Serena and Abigail have been diligently creating food. And we're probably going to have a special guest join us. Is he in the back right now? Yeah. Will you call him up? And we can do his first. We have a special guest with us today who's going to participate in our first challenge. And he's going to run up here super fast, lightning speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lucas Stephen Wright Come on up. is going to be a part of this first one. So here's how it's going to work. We're all going to have to close our eyes. OK? And we're going to have to guess which one is store brand, which one is generic, but then you tell us which one you think tastes the best, okay? <laughs> He's ready. He's ready. Okay. The you first ready? one. Yes. Close your eyes. Right. Ready? Keep them closed. This first one is Pop-Tarts. So we have strawberry Pop-Tarts. <sighs> All right. I'm going to give you each a piece, okay? Okay. Mm. I'm ready. Get you. Okay. Serena asked if she could feed us, like spoon feed us at some point, so that's going to happen. <laughs> you ready, Luke? Mm -hmm. Okay, you put out your hand. Okay, and then we just eat it. And then you just pop it in. So I prefer, like, the chocolate ones, like the s'mores Pop-Tarts are the best. I'm not a fan of the strawberry, but we're going to go with it anyway. Okay, that was pretty good. Any first initial guesses? My first initial guess was that this was the real one. Really? That's my first initial guess, is that this is real. Did you like this one? I think that was strawberry. Luke's strawberry. <laughs> Luke says he thinks it's strawberry. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready for the other one? You want to close your eyes? OK. My initial guess was that that last one was the store, or the, the, the store brand the one? The off brand, yeah. OK. I have nothing to compare it to, other than my lack of food. I also never eat yeah, strawberry pop so I. <laughs> All right, put out your hand. Mm. See, that one was fluffier and fuller. 
I think this is. That last one I had felt I fuller and fluffier. So I'm going to say that that one's the, the not store brand. I think that one is the store brand. Interesting. So you say that that one was actual Pop-Tarts, the second one? Yeah. And you say that it wasn't. Yeah. What do you think? Actual. You think it was the actual Pop-Tarts? You're going to side with You buddy? thought the second one was better? So the first one was actual Pop-Tarts. Wow. And the second one was generic. So generic Pop-Tarts are better. Generic Pop-Tarts no! are better. No! I thought uh, the first we, one buddy. tastes better. Well, Luke was on my side, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you, bud. High five. Well done. Okay. No, I thought that the first Pop Tart tasted better. Okay. The second one felt like it, it had more um, fullness to it. I thought it like fullness tasted. Fullness of eternal. Promise. Yeah, promise. Yeah. Promise. I thought that it was airier. Like I thought mm -hmm. the first one was denser mm -hmm. and had like more filling in it. The other one tasted more like just. It's puffy. And yeah. It. I like guess pastry. that's what I liked. If it tasted more like a donut. <laughs> Deb <laughs> says that Luke is her favorite <laughs> guest. Love you, Luke. Arabella wants you to make sure that you don't lick your fingers. I, yes, thank you, Arabella. I will try not to. I was trying to be more mindful. They are very sticky starting off. So. We, we, we watched it again, like, the other day, and Serena just goes... <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Kevin says, hey, Luke, I saw your grater. That thing is awesome. He says you're greater. I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about. Off screen, know. Luke goes, my what? <laughs> okay, so All right, we're, we're split on which one we preferred with that. Yes. And so I'm currently winning for, for which one is store brand versus not. Wait, so are we doing which is store brand or are we doing which is better? Because I'm confused now. I think both. Okay. All right, are you guys ready? So you have I, to like I don't do trust my analysis. palate anymore. <laughs> I had a lot of faith in my palate before the Skittles thing, and I don't, I don't trust I don't trust. All right, we are going to transition to some breakfast food. Okay. Are we so doing I'm cereal? going to show the viewers first what you guys are getting. So okay. we can't look. Close your okay. eyes. Yep. Okay. Hey. Is this the cereal this that's been sitting for 20 the minutes? Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> they poured it out 20 minutes ago with milk and so like, don't don't open it's your eyes. It's going to be more like soup. Breakfast no, soup. I think <laughs> ew. I think <laughs> Abby poured that one away. And so this is like fresh cereal. Oh, this good. Is fresh cereal. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks. Is this where you're gonna spoon feed us? Um, I can. Or I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. Ready, that, 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 Ready? that will not I'm turn so out. Well. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna eat it myself. I'm just gonna do this myself. You're gonna okay. do this I'm just not okay. gonna look. I trust you to spoon feed. Interesting. Me. Okay. Um. I'm curious to taste the other one. I think that one's generic. Okay, keep but your spoons. Keep your spoons. I'm just going to start saying whatever you say. All right, eyes closed. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. There's that one. Thank you, darling. Eyes closed. Okay. Can I, can I touch things? I yep, don't know. Go for it. So the one that my spoon is in is the one that I eat? Nope, you already. Okay, there we go. There okay. you go. Okay. Ooh. Johnny says he has a recipe for homemade Pop-Tarts. Interesting. I think the first weird. one is generic. I think the next one is store bought, and I think I prefer the store bought. That's so funny. Or the or the name Wait. brand, not store bought. Sorry. First so one's I, generic. I second thought, one's name brand. Man, why are we opposite? <laughs> I, I thought the first one was the actual Fruit Loops, and the second one was the, the store bought. So the first one was the actual Fruit Loops, hey! and the second one was not. Would you guys like any more bites? No. No. Okay. I, I took I took like quite a few bites. Okay. <laughs> This next one. What a fun day. I hope you guys are enjoying a sweet food. Because <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay, what a do you, lot. what, overall, so you preferred real fruit, flu, fruit loops? I don't know why I slurred all that. I never eat fruit loops, so I don't trust my, I like, half of this stuff I don't really eat. But over those two things, which one did you like better, the store bought? I like the, the first one. So the actual fruit the loops. The actual fruit loops. Yeah. I think I like the generic <coughs> ones. I think twice now, I've preferred the generic. Well, my favorite cereal growing up was um, Reese's Puffs. Interesting. And, like, I would actually eat them as a snack. I wouldn't even put milk in it. I would just eat them. Because, they like, each of them individually yeah, yeah. had, like, a coating of, like, glaze of sugar. Ask them, ask them that everybody watching just skip Pastor Brian wants to know, is the broadcast skipping for you where you're at right now? If it is, put it in the comments. Just say, yes, it is. If it's not, super. Arabella says I would get a sugar rush, a sugar rush off of it. Oh, I, we're probably gonna have a sugar rush the rest of this broadcast, yep. <laughs> and like crash. But you've preferred the name brand ones over the last two things, right? I think so. I think so. Did I? 
No, uh, not not the pop tarts. Not the pop tarts. You like the generic? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm here. I'm done. All right. Thing What's number next? Three, skipping on Facebook. Okay. So, buddy, I think we'll do really well because this is our Cheez Its challenge. Ooh. Either Cheez Its or cheese crackers. Okay. I am excited. Now, these are things that I eat often. Yes. All right. Eyes closed. But I'm not. Eyes I'm, closed. I still don't. I will put a few. By the way, Johnny said it was skipping on Facebook. Don't look. Don't look. I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. Okay, so this is one of them. One of them. I, I like tried these beforehand and had a hard time differentiating. Really? Yes. Okay, give me the other. Yep. Okay. You're giving me so many. That is close. Yeah, okay. right? I know if I look at them, I would be able to yeah. get them. This is important stuff. It is. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Is the first one the cheese it and the second one the cheese cracker? Is that what you think, buddy? Uh, I'm switching it. <laughs> Final answers. I think the one you just handed me. Are you trying to find the texture? What? <laughs> Are you I think licking the, the one you just right handed now? me was the cheese its the one you handed me before it was not. The first one was the Cheez-Its. The second one was not. I expected a little more. This is Buddy's favorite snack. Well, <laughs> my faith in the store brand is increasing. I, I do enjoy this right now because I normally always lose games, like always. So I enjoy that I like kind of won the Skittles under. one. And I like that right now it's close. At least you haven't like pulled super far ahead. I enjoy that. Yeah. But do you like the generic one over the, or do you like the Cheez-Its? So I still prefer Cheez-Its. Even though that, you that's thought a the generic thing. was Cheez-Its? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. What's uh, next? Okay. We got Oreos or Twist and Shout. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, okay. Twist and Shout, Twist and Shout. All right, eyes closed. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. <gasps> I so appreciate the crab trees more and more, day by day. Okay. So this one. Okay. I don't eat Oreos enough. What's next? You guys ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it skipping, guys? When you're watching the broadcast, is the broadcast skipping for you right now? Johnny said it was on Facebook. I am 95% confident in this one. Oreo, twist and shout. So the first one was t twist and shout, and the second one was Oreo? Yeah. What do you think, Barrett? I think the first one is Oreo, and the second one is twist and shout. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's correct. Good job, guys. Wait, well, did I, wait, wait, I wait. said it wrong? The first one was Twist and Shout. No, 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 You said it right. You said, said it right. right? Okay. Yeah. So now we're tied. Well, now it's split. Is that right? <laughs> no, I said it wrong. I said Oreo Twist and Shout. That's what I said. Two. And I'm looking now at the Oreo logo. I was wrong. We have two more products to taste We're test. finding out. George says it is skipping on Facebook. Abby says it's skipping for her, too. So everyone switch over to YouTube? It's a good time to... Tell everybody. Go ahead, go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and tell everybody, say, we're going to pause and then come right back. We're going to pause and then come right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but are there any more taste tests? We yes. have two more. Two more. All right. We'll go ahead and do the taste test, and then we'll come right back. Okay. Oh, yeah. The next thing we have is mac and cheese. Can we just switch to the Coke because now my mouth is full of all this <laughs> stuff, and I need to wash it. Disclaimer, I didn't know you could mess up. Microwave mac and cheese, but you can, so. I'm so proud of you. Um, the labels are on this, so you guys will need to shut your eyes. Okay. I, I have a, been this. under the assumption my eyes were to be shut this whole time, so if buddies have been open at all, and mine, I'm just sitting here awkwardly, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I've been, I don't I've been in and out. I can see this at all. I cannot Bam. see. There you go. Oh, it's nice and warm. It is. Yes. There okay. It is. Where's the spoon? This could just be entertaining to watch me try and feed myself right now. And I will take them back when you're yeah. finished. Oh, man. Blech. 
That's horrible. <laughs> we talked about the other day, like, do we, Velveeta and so, Mac and Velveeta. Okay. That was not good. Eyes are still closed? Mm hmm. I would say that that's off brand. Yeah, that would be my guess, too. But I've been wrong a lot. So far, we're I said I was 95% confident, <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, there's always that 5%. I, where's the, see, the, the problem is I can't tell which side is up with the spoon. I think I got it. Oh, it's, I can't even get it back. on the spoon. It's just That's all mac clumpy. and cheese. That's normal mac and cheese. The first one's uh, generic. I concur. Yep. So you guys both. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, no. no! I opened my so, eye. That was wrong. Uh, well, I was going to change it because I remember seeing the texture of the outside of this one. That's was. cheating. <laughs> and I can feel I the texture. I will say, it. it's the first one, the real Kraft mac and cheese that I messed up in the microwave. Wait, so. time, time out. <laughs> Kevin Nowicki said Fruit Loops scarred the roof of his mouth. How is that even possible? Wow. Did you put too much in uh, and then it cut it out? Captain Crunch does that. Like, if you eat Captain Crunch, it's great, but you're going to pay for it because it'll shred the roof of your mouth. How? How, how do you eat cereal? Do I don't understand. How do you not eat cereal that it doesn't gouge up the roof? I do That's never you happened to me. It, like, scratches it. Pastor and I talked about this recently. It has scratched the roof of his mouth as well. Interesting. I've not never... all cereals, but some cereals. That's hmm. it's probably because I eat good cereal. <laughs> Luke's in the bathroom, or bathroom. He's in the back of the room going, I eat Captain Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have one last more. one to finish it all off. We thought we would give some refreshing. Thank you. Coca Cola, and well, or, or Sam's Cola. All right, eyes closed. Okay, Marky says that she excitedly eats it before it's soft because, and so it has cut the roof of her mouth. Okay, so this is either generic cola, like Sam's Cola, or Coke. All right, let me make sure I'm giving time. you guys the right stuff. Careful, I don't want to. Oh, I, can we open our eyes? Yeah, you can open your eyes. Oh, okay. oh. All right, just close your eyes really quick so I can show the viewers. Okay. 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 You got it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's flat. <laughs> it's flat. Oh, well. How long has that been sitting out? That makes sense. Kevin, Cheez-Its are nasty regardless. What? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eyes closed for one second. Okay. Eyes closed. Okay. Okay. That's uh, not. Wait, wait. Open, buddy. You can open. You can. Buddy. That's, yeah, that, that's the same one. You're about to. That could have been fun. First one was definitely. Fun. <laughs> A side note I'm really sorry for the sounds that you're experiencing right now. Mmm, difficulty. I couldn't they, tell you, have, they have two different flavors. I couldn't tell you the last time I had Coke to begin with. Mm -hmm. The second one and is like... And they're both flat. The second one is more tart, I feel like. I would say that this is Coke. This is the second one. Um, it's on the bottom of your cups. Hey, there's a hair in mine. <laughs> but I got it right. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah. I would have said the first one was Coke, so I don't know. I, I, I didn't know. So you won. Good job. Did I win? Not well, not. yeah. That challenge. Because we, lo well, we both lost the last one, so you won. I got Pop-Tart. Yep. No, I got Pop-Tart. Right? You got Pop-Tart. Then you I got, got the wrong. second one. What was the second one? Uh, the cereal. I got yeah, the cereal. you got the cereal. I got the Oreo wrong. You got the Cheez-Its. You got the, I got the you Oreo, got the Oreo, Oreo wrong? No, you got the Oreo yeah, right. You I got, got, no, I got the Oreo wrong. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. I got the Cheez-It wrong, so is it a tie? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Well, we tied. Johnny okay, says he loves Cheez-Its. Yeah. Johnny's my friend. Johnny's a man of God that knows good things. Okay. We love you. We're going to stop the stream real quickly, I believe. We're going to be right back. Stay where you are. Yeah, it's already stopped. Okay. Never mind. Just kidding. I'm going to I'm gonna unplug myself, Mark. I'm so sorry for that awkward 30 seconds, guys. We thought that it was off. Well, YouTube viewers, Johnny, Arabella, we love you so much. Yeah, so Buddy and I tied in that game. Um, I 
do enjoy knowing that I prefer generic Pop-Tarts to like legit Pop-Tarts though. It means that I don't have to spend that much money on Pop-Tarts ever again. <laughs> Thank you. So. Hello. Hey. Thank you for watching. As you guys are here, share the broadcast. Tell us who you are, where you're watching from. And George would, or someone can, you pull up the correct video on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, so apparently, Facebook was just I mean, like completely glitching. So anyway, hey guys, if you're on uh, Facebook now, uh, go, you can, this is the new video. Yes. And uh, if you're having trouble still, you can go to YouTube. I'm going to try and put that link up real quick. George, if you'll go on, on here, we're, because we're adjusting, George, if you'll go to the Brian and Nicole page on the left-hand side. I'm just getting up. That'll pop. Do, do, do. This is fun. <laughs> Talk to him. I'm handling something. Okay. Well, while Pastor Brian's handling something and Barrett is handling something, <laughs> I'm just going to stand here and talk. I'm just there kidding. we go. For I'm the back. meantime. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Johnny says he's working and listening to it, so it doesn't okay. bother him that I'm... Cool. Working. Kevin, Kevin, if you, uh, if you do see that it skips on Facebook, let us know. Apparently, there was something wrong over there. It apparently, it wasn't skipping anywhere else. So. Thanks Praise for God. your if it, patience. Yeah, thank you. I noticed that the numbers on Facebook, they kept going down, and on the way here, I was seeing that it was skipping, skipping, skipping. So, hmm. All right, there we go. Good People catch. are getting... Hey, Brittany. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Marty. Yeah, if you ever see it constantly doing that, you have to you have to watch that. So look, it's all right back up to good. Good. Thanks for hanging. Growing with us. up, yeah. Thanks for coming back. Amen. I don't know what was going on with Facebook. It wasn't on YouTube or anywhere else or Periscope, but just on uh, Facebook. So they must have had some glitch. Yeah, and if you see that it's glitching, let us know. Facebook did not want us to uncover the fact that generic food can be better than the name brand. Okay, so I need I need <laughs> Serena to help. Tell us what <laughs> happened in all the uh, taste tests that we had. I don't so. know where Serena just... The oh, she's dumping the cereal out. So what were the... You had Pop-Tarts, first of all. Pop-Tarts? Mm -hmm. Could you tell the difference? Yes. Oh, yeah. For sure. Without question. Yeah. yeah. Pop-Tart, like the actual Pop-Tart was more pastry and flaky and less like good stuff in the middle. I got you. Yeah, I, I prefer like. the... I like the pastry better than the, the innards. The innards. <laughs> <laughs> so generic is really good with pop tarts. That was a fun moment. What a great like thing to screen grab someday. That was fun for you. That was terrifying. <laughs> All right. So what was the next thing you had? Macaroni and cheese. We did have that. The next one after the um, after the what pop tarts. What was the macaroni and cheese? You don't have to go on the list. Oh, okay. The macaroni and cheese was either generic or craft, and who we, won? Craft. We both lost. Oh. Like guessing it. Really. But. Yeah. The generic one beat the craft one. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Serena said, full disclaimer, though, she messed up making the craft one the first time, so <laughs> the texture of the noodles may have helped. I got you. I got you. And then you had the uh, cereal. We did. We had Fruit Loops. There was a difference there. I preferred the generic. Buddy preferred the original one. I thought the generic one had more flavor. Hmm. Huh. Okay. And then you had Cheez-Its. We did, and that's where Serena said that she expected more out of Buddy because Cheez-Its are Buddy's favorite snack, and he guessed wrong. I was wrong. disappointed in myself. You missed it. I missed it, yeah. <laughs> but they were close. I it. They were pretty close. Like, they, they tasted similarly. Hey, Miss Dixie. Then we did Oreos. Oreos. Luke also participated with the Pop-Tart one, and yeah. he said that real Pop-Tarts were better. That may have been because Buddy said real Pop-Tarts were better. <laughs> I'm not sure. And then the Oreos, what happened? I think that we both guessed them incorrectly. Yeah. We thought that really? the generic one was the actual Oreo. Really? Well, see, I was trying to base it off of like feeling for the Oreo logo. I wasn't basing it off of taste. He also and I got it did wrong. the same thing with the craft one. Like, as, I was going to change it right at the end. But as then... Serena announced it, he's like, I remember the texture of this being different. Because I was looking at it, the one had a lot of texture, one was just yeah. slick and smooth. So, what well, was I okay? <laughs> he says, I'm about to buy a bunch of generic stuff now. Um, I'd be curious on that, what my taste would be. What was the Coke? The, the, 
that was weird. That was a weird one. They, they had different flavors, but I couldn't distinct it. You so couldn't ma tell. Ma well, like, I could tell that there was a difference um, between the two. And one had some extra flavor, so I assumed that that was the Coke. Okay. I think I got that one right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One was definitely, like, tangier than the other, like, mm -hmm. in, in that way. And I think yeah. that was the off-brand one. Yeah, yeah. But there's plenty for you to play this game afterwards as well. <laughs> well, I'm not. It was good that I wasn't here because I'm, <laughs> I'm not eating right now, so it's we're good. But uh, yeah, I was I was interested. The one that will I <coughs> I would think that I would get the Coke right, but I'm not so sure about everything. Probably the Coke and the Pop Tarts, maybe. But anyway. The Pop-Tarts were the ones I felt confident going into the game with. <laughs> I was excited that we started with that because it gave me a nice little boost of confidence that then yeah. dwindled as the game progressed. <laughs> I don't. I have generically, or genuinely, Gener generically, generically. <laughs> I have genuinely not enjoyed anything but the normal Cokes. Like if you get the off-brand of Coke, I, I just don't like them as much. Mm. But um, I'd be curious if it how how much I can tell. This game. I can't believe you don't like the insides of Pop Tarts. I, I didn't say I don't like it. <laughs> I don't just, like it I, as much. I, you like the pastry yeah. of the Pop Tart. Mm. He also and prefers chocolate ones and not the berries. Like the, my favorite ones are the s'mores ones. Mm -hmm. The s'mores mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. S'mores <laughs> Pop Tarts? Yeah. Really? They're the awesome. The marketing in the back has come alive. I like, um, I like all the ones with the white topping mm -hmm. and I like the cinnamon. Those are, those yes, are those the are brown cinnamon sugar yeah. Yeah. are great ones. Those are some of my favorites. Yeah, a question, do you toast them or do you just eat them regularly? Like I had not time? toasted them until I was an adult because I didn't realize that's what they were for. I just <laughs> toast them, yeah. You do? I, no, I don't toast them. Oh, you don't. Yeah, yeah, I never just did. eat them. Yeah. See, Marky says toast them. I, I did not, or I did not. When people will like preach, and I understand why they're preaching it, about how you can believe God for like, name brand things, you don't have to settle for generic. Like, I'll hear that, and immediately I'll be like, but I really prefer the generic ones the majority of the time. Like, <laughs> they normally taste better. <laughs> I get what they're saying, but. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> there's certain things I don't mind. I don't mind with it, but, uh, yeah. My wife says there is zero nutritional value in Pop-Tarts. I love, well, your heart seems strawberry. passive aggressive after that. <laughs> zero nutritional value in Pop-Tarts. Smile. <laughs> Love you. What about donuts? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> oh, I want to watch this. <laughs> Let's watch the comments on this one. I'm very excited. <laughs> George says that you toast the ones without frosting, then spread some butter on it. Ew. What if, what if, what if... Um, she says, they say, Nicole says, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We should start with something somewhat healthy. And she said, donuts are a dessert, too. <laughs> oh, that was really Abigail, funny. Abigail, what kind of high five to Barrett just give that a backhanded <laughs> high five? I had, like, a bottle cap in my index fingers, and I wasn't sure... I had the bottle here. There was, I didn't want to leave you hanging for any time. I was actually thinking the same thing, but I wasn't going to say it out loud. What about like, if that's you such took, a weird okay, outside. two wow. s'mores Pop-Tarts, two s'mores Pop-Tarts toasted with Nutella in between them. I thought you were going to say ice cream in between. Or ice cream. I immediately went to what if you replace. That's a great ice cream sandwiches. What if you replace the graham cracker with s'mores with the s'mores pop tart instead with chocolate and then the marshmallow? That's where I went to. Wow, I, I like your idea better. Or <laughs> s'mores, that would be good. s'mores <laughs> with fluff in the middle. Yes. See, I'll get yeah. Marky right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. She said she would never eat a pop tart for dessert though. Same. Like sure. that's same. Absolutely. Holly says, why I does would, everyone like Nutella so much? You know what, Holly, I'm not, a, I like Nutella, but I'm not a huge fan of it, like everybody seems to be. I have that question as well. But I, I put Nutella in there because I know people like it. I have, <laughs> I have a theory that I'm working on, and I'm very disappointed <laughs> about it. Because Do you have diagrams no, and pictures? It's, it's not that <laughs> it, It's not a real theory until it's, you have pictures. There's a whole wall <laughs> with like 10. 
I'm trying to think if there's something like before theory. I have an idea. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's slightly conspiracy though. So <laughs> I'm, Nutella's fine, dandy, it's great. Where was, has, was New, how long has Nutella been around? Uh, probably like 10 years. I feel like it is. Longer than that. I don't really? I haven't I heard of it when it I was a then. kid at camp. I never even heard of it until yeah. like five years ago. That's true. I had my friend at camp would bring Cheez Its and Nutella and dip them together, and that's what her snack would be. But here, here's here's my thing. So I, how long has it been around? Apparently, I don't. Since get to 1964. Talk. <laughs> Whatever, guys. What? We'll never know. 1964. Nutella's been around since 1964. Yep. What in the world? I'm sorry. Did you have a theory? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking my about? My palate is a lot different than y'all's. <laughs> I, like Nutella what are we is talking fine, about today? but I <laughs> want to know what happened in the same section. There used to be Reese's like peanut butter chocolate spread thing. Did you ever see that when you went to oh, buy yeah. peanut? It's gone. I, I have I looked saw for it that. Not too long ago, somewhere. I've looked for it for the last like four months because every so often that'll be like my dessert thing that I'll do. Like I'll just have a spoon of it and what, and it has been gone from every grocery store. You know, I find that. It vanished. No well, curtain. I find that there's things that switch around like regions in the country. Because I'll, when I'll travel to different places, I'll be like, oh, there's that. Or what in the world is that? And we don't have it here. And then it'll come through and then it'll be gone again. And I think they do it on purpose. Well, I'm ready to start like a social media movement because I want it back here in North Carolina. I don't know where you went, Reese's, but I <laughs> will fund you being back here. I miss you. I, I, just, I just really like Kevin's. Like, he obviously had a very yes. powerful first experience because he literally said, the first time I had Nutella was 32 years ago in Germany. <laughs> like, 32 years ago was the first time I had Nutella. Serena, I'm really sorry I dropped the ball on this. I apologize. Abby brought up something Serena wanted me to ask. Nutella or Nutella? And it is, is it raining. raining again? Man, it has been pouring this week. We're like, oh, Kevin's like, I hate Nutella. Nutella. Yes. You hate Nutella. So, so it was a bad experience that happened 32 years ago. Serena, I can't <laughs> tell if that's Nutella or Nutella. That's that's. <laughs> Ser Serena says Nutella because she was making fun of me saying Nutella the other day. <laughs> there it is, Nutella. Uh, is that a long U or a short? That's U? that's why that is Nutella. <laughs> now she has to try again. <laughs> Nutella is pronounced trash. <laughs> you know, I, as I'm sitting here, I feel like I say like <laughs> Nutella, but I don't, I don't put the break there. Like Pastor Nicole just put up Nutella, and I think that here there's an emphasis on the T that I don't get. Like I think I'll say Nutella. <laughs> Marky said a few comments back, like 15 years ago, I used to steal Candy's Nutella in her closet. Like Marky. Like that's where she would keep it, or that's Do where you, you would hide. You need to confess at the altar. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that she used to scoop and, it out like Winnie the Pooh in a honey pot. And here, here's what's concerning to me: I'm just is, her in the like, is this her bedroom <laughs> closet? She had Nutella in her bedroom closet. <laughs> Candy. <laughs> wow. That's All right. Funny. Did you have stuff in your bedroom closet? No. Because that's. Is weird. that where she would hide it from you, thinking that you didn't know where it was? She's like, I don't know. She just but had she a found it. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not she's on it, she found it. My parents had like special <laughs> the food greatest, that they would hide. <laughs> the greatest day of hide and seek ever. Hiding. Oh, I found her Nutella stash. <laughs> See, that was like the best ever. I understand that though, because my parents had special food that was like off limits for my brother and I. And when we would find it, it would be a very similar situation of <laughs> run into the bathroom, eating some ho hos. Like, yeah, well, it was different for me. My parents didn't hide it. I just got, in, I got, you know, in trouble <laughs> when they found the Reese's wrapper in the trash. Like my dad w was literally like Sherlock. <laughs> Nicole, like, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> he was like Sherlock. <laughs> he, he was like Sherlock. Like he he would know when we did something wrong. Yeah. Like it must be the Holy Spirit. I don't know, but like I like I he wasn't allowed help. to have uh, pellet guns, and I bought one and I hid it under my bed. And then one day I, I looked for it and it was gone. <laughs> and my dad never said anything. 
which made it worse because I can't like come to him and say, "Hey, did you take my, my bow gun?" Did like you have, I, like, I couldn't do anything. Feeling in your stomach of like my gun? yeah, forever. Like even if like it like never it like never went away. Like and then to this day, like when I asked Dad about it, he doesn't respond. He, like he just smiles. <laughs> gonna get a phone call after this broadcast. Now. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Seriously. Kevin says that if Nutella would remove the hazelnut flavor, it'd be awesome. So if Nutella <laughs> That's would what stop it is. being Nutella, it would be great. Nicole <laughs> said to your comment, in her best taken Liam Neeson voice, I know who you are, Reese's. I will hunt you down and find mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and, you know, to quote the last of the Mohicans, no matter how long it takes, no matter how far, I will find you. <laughs> like, it'll happen. So Marky said she went away to college and she forgot it, so I didn't have to steal it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I like getting glimpses into Marky's childhood. <laughs> it like it helps understand some things. <laughs> some things. <laughs> like the last time I saw Marky eating the tell no, I've never seen her do that. Dixie says, Dads know everything where they make up something good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Well, let's jump into today. We're talking about loyalty and honor in the man who would be king. And uh, I know most of you have been with us this whole time, and thank you for being here. Share the broadcast if you haven't shared it already. Uh, right, actually, if you shared the first one on Facebook, now share the second one because yeah. the first one is <laughs> null and void. So everything y'all did, it'll just be Forgotten. deleted in the <laughs> trash can. We have it on the computer. That's but sad. Anyway. Good job with that. <laughs> so glad all the effort you put in. Yeah. <laughs> this is like uh, a the only like effort I put in was eating. Eating. So well, I'm there okay. you go. That's all right. That's all right. You put a lot more into it. So Serena and Abby put more effort into any of it. Really, That's that was true. that was them. Thanks, guys. So these uh, next two chapters are are more interesting chapters, and they're to me they're emotional. But uh, you see the loyalty and honor of God. Uh, happening here in different ways. And uh, let's jump in. We're going to be in 1 Samuel 31. Somebody please put that in the comments. 1 Samuel 31. And it says, <clears throat> the, the uh, context of this is that the Philistines and the Israelites were coming together. Saul had gone to visit the medium at Endor or the psychic at uh, Endor. And they, the psychic uh, spirit that they had pulled up prophesied to Saul that him and his sons would die. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, you know, just because somebody says something doesn't make them yeah. a prophet. Uh, this, I, I don't know why, you know, just because somebody says something doesn't make them a prophet. And here's the other thing. Just because somebody misses it doesn't mean they're not a prophet. Yeah. It's, uh, now, if they're consistently doing that or they're not giving God the glory, obviously then they're, they're not a prophet in that way. But, uh, you know, prophets uh, have, a f you know, corrupted flesh too, and sometimes they'll allow their soul to get in the way. What I will say is um, that they don't just need to say things that they think. Mm -hmm. They need to know that it's from God. In other words, if you just say something, you're like, oh, well, I missed it, and you do that all the time. You know, what you're saying is, I'm not really trying to tell you what God said. I'm just trying to give you what I think, and mm -hmm. you need to be mindful of that. At the same time, uh, how are they going to get better at, yeah. at hearing from the Lord in that way if they're not stepping out there in faith? So there is some middle ground there. But a lot of people think that because that spirit that came up, uh, that they you know, professed to be Samuel, prophesied and it came true, that they thought that that was definitely Samuel yeah. prophesying. But uh, familiar spirits can work in a very similar way. Yeah. And that was what I was showing. A familiar spirit could give you a, a, a quote-unquote prophecy of doom, and then the person take it in fear, and then it, that fear will draw it. Not the prophecy, but the fear mm -hmm. in that word being true uh, can draw it. And so now they're in this battle, and it's not going well. And uh, let's just read through, and uh, I'll, <clears throat> I'll stop when we need to. But verse 1 1 Samuel 31, verse 1. Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan and Abinadab 
and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle went heavily against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was badly wounded by the archers. And, and so, let's see here. Okay, yep. And the battle went heavily against Saul. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and pierce me through with it. Otherwise, the un, these uncircumcised will come and pierce me through and make sport of me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. So Saul took his sword and fell on it. And if you don't know what that means, he basically took his sword out and then placed it you know, sturdy on the ground and then fell on his own sword so it would go, uh, have force to go through him and he killed himself. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. Thus, verse 6, thus Saul died with his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men on that day together. All his men on that day together. Now, I want, I want you to see something here. Um, you remember you know, many episodes back when we were talking about the one guy that came up to Saul and said, uh, David is against you. You remember that guy? Well, we just read, it, you know, we can't prove it, but it gives all the context here in verse 6 that all of Saul's men died, including that guy. You remember that guy was so voiced in his opinion, he was like, I'll kill him, you know, I'll, I'll kill these guys. Mm -hmm. And he was so voiced in his opinion, and now, by all looks of it, he's dead along with Saul. I watch, it, I watch over time as people think that they're being loyal and they think they're being honorable, but they're not being honorable to God or honorable to the truth. Mm -hmm. What they're actually being honorable and loyal to is upholding their own position and their own control and power. And this guy was going after power. And, and remember, uh, Saul goes in and he commands and there was 80 priests slain that yeah. day. Well, well, the question I want to ask is, how is that working out for these guys today? Yeah. In this chapter. Mm -hmm. So the, the person, watch this, the person that he put his faith in has now led him to his death. Yeah. And so you don't want to put faith in a person, but you want to put faith in God. Mm -hmm. And you put faith in people based off of the fruit that they're producing in God. Mm -hmm. See, anybody could have watched Saul and seen his life and said... He is not operating by, by God. And then we see a couple of chapters ago where he takes off his kingly garments and he goes in the night to consult somebody that's not of the Lord. Yeah. Anybody, and now that opened up the door, I would say that opened up the door for him to now fall dead and all of his men. Now watch this. How many men did Saul take with him? So many times people are looking in loyalty and honor, and they think that loyalty and honor is just where they keep upholding a man, you know, they keep upholding somebody and keep upholding a leader. That's not what you do. Now, at the same time, at the same time, you have to realize that, uh, I'm at this game. Uh, at the same time, you have to realize that when you do that, when you, you're not supposed to just jump ship either. Yeah. And you'll see that in David here in a few minutes. You don't just jump ship. You want to actually make sure that you're following uh, the Lord. So you've seen many mighty people of God who have messed up. Like if you ever watch uh, God's Generals by Robert Liardin, uh, you will see that most of those guys that moved mightily in the things of God are now not not moving at all. A lot of them have passed now at this time. But by the end of their life, they weren't moving in God in that way. What they were doing was actually they believed you know, some stuff they shouldn't have believed. They got off track. And it really, by watching those, I love the works that God did through them. But what I really, you know, it really challenged me was make sure that you are doing the right thing for a long period of time, Brian, and don't get off. Like, for example, one thing that I'm really challenged in reading these stories about David is how often in his youth he consulted the Lord. Mm 
And I think as we go on, you'll see that he doesn't consult the Lord as much, and that leads to a couple of mistakes yeah. that he makes. But yeah. how often? And I can remember as, as a young minister, I was talking to the Lord all the time, and yeah. I definitely hit some spots in my life where I wasn't asking the Lord as much. This is a humility. So we must stay humble and we must stay hungry. And this is a part of loyalty to God and honor to God. And I can remember the devil you know, talking to me and telling, or not the devil, but the Lord telling me about the devil. I can remember the Lord talking to me and telling me about the devil and how he would try to trip up and how he would try to just get a little bit in, just a little bit in my life. And then that could run and, and go a wrong way. I've watched that now over the years how uh, maybe I've watched how, uh, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, tired. I want to, I want to just relax. And so I sit down and I go through a slump of where like maybe three months or so or six months or so. I'll watch movies when I'm tired. And I find that my spirituality drops, boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 and it just keeps getting yeah. lower. It's not that watching movies is, is all wrong. It's just that what are you making your source? It goes back to those questions. Yeah. How are we honoring God even in our free time? Yeah. We, we need to pay attention to the things that God is up to and not just fall into a rut that the world has told us to fall into. Yeah. It's one of those things that becomes very important. Uh, when when do we read our when do we read our Bible? When do we pray? When do we worship God? Are we doing this on a regular basis? Is it coming out of us? Let me let me show you something here. Uh, let's go to Ephesians five, and I think it's also First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians five. Uh, it may be. I'm gonna have to look it look it up here. Yep, so in Ephesians 5, one of the things that you see is in verse 18. Yeah, and it may be 1 Thessalonians 5, 7. Look that up and let me see it. So Ephesians 5, 18 says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And uh, so one of, the things, one of the things that you see in this verse is it's going to be connected to one of these. I'm talking about this. Mm -hmm. I think it's here in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, one of the things that you see is that when he tells us to be filled with, with the Spirit, he means to be baptized with the Spirit and to be overflowing with the Spirit of God. In other words, the Spirit of God's coming out of you. And he says, speaking to one another, he says, one, when you're filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us the symptoms of being filled with the Spirit. And he says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Watch this. Singing and making melody with your heart, with your heart to the Lord. Yeah. So when you're overflowing with the things of God, uh, spiritual language is going to come out of you. I'm not just talking about praying in tongues. I'm talking about you're going to have thanksgiving on your heart and coming out of you. You're going to have singing mm -hmm. songs coming out of you in this way. And he says, verse 20, always giving thanks for the things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Here's four things that are symptoms are proving that we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, number one, we're speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. There's a song in your heart. Mm -hmm. We're always giving thanks, and we're subject to one another. This is, this is the proof that we're filled with the things of God. This will come out of us naturally. Mm -hmm. I found that when I'm walking with the Lord and I'm filled up, I'll just start singing in the Spirit on a regular basis. I mean, y'all probably heard me do that at different times because a lot of times I don't even realize I'm doing it. I'm just flowing in the Holy Ghost. And um, now, I, you know, there are times when I practice doing that, but there's times where it just comes mm -hmm. out of you, and that's what I'm talking about is it just comes out of you. So one of the things that we should watch in our walk 
is that are we always walking in the fullness of God or are we making excuses for it? Are we, are we walking where the fullness of God is overflowing our lives? Yeah. Did you find that? Yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 26, but then I think uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, I think is okay. where you're talking. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. It's where it's talking. What's 1426? 1426 is, how is it then, brothers, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation, and an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Yeah, every one of you has a psalm, a teaching. You, You start to see that this is an overflow of a life that's filled with the things of God. And so you can watch this in people. And so, you know, take, you know, look at my life, for example, for a second. What you see now, you've been here how long? Seven? Seven years in August. Seven years in August. So you've seen over that period of time, uh, you've seen where I've been on fire for God. You've seen where, whether you recognize it or not, you have also seen where I've been plateaued. Mm-hmm. And you've seen, but what you've seen is a constant humility and hunger that hasn't stopped mm-hmm. and the growth keeps going. And there's times where, you know, not trying to do this, but I've definitely done it. There's times where it's been going up and there's times when it's been going down, but the going down has been lesser than, than the going up. And it's constantly kind of been like this. So you've had testimony of that. So just because you see somebody back off of the things of God, you know, for a few months, that doesn't mean that they've fallen. It just Mm -hmm. means that they're working out something in their flesh. Well, what person on the earth, what pastor on the earth, what leader on the earth is not going to have those moments? Every leader that I've ever met has had those moments. Every one of them that I've ever met has had those moments. So that's not the reason to leave somebody. But when you look at the life of Saul... He's hunting down to kill a man that has nothing against him, that had two opportunities to kill him, and he still did not kill him. David's heart was right. Saul's was wrong. Saul's not inquiring of the Lord. Saul's not repenting to the Lord. He's just keeping on going like he has a right to. Mm -hmm. And so he's not engaging the Lord like he should. There's no evidence of that. This is somebody that you stop being loyal to. However, but you always be loyal to the things of God. And if you look at it, even here, now, he still is God's anointed. He still was anointed by God to be king. And this is the loyalty that David sees. You notice that David's not hanging around him. He is, but he's not harming him either. He's not talking bad about him. He's not going against the Israelites because Saul's an Israelite, you know. He's not doing that. Saul is, I mean, David is still honoring and loyal to Saul. You're going to see this. But even the armor bearer, I like, I like this because the armor bearer says, Saul says, kill me. And the armor bearer says, I'm not putting my hand to you. I'm not going to do it. This is a loyalty to God right here. And it says that he's afraid. But what's he afraid of? He's afraid of the Lord. You know, he's afraid not of Saul. He's afraid of, I'm not going to touch somebody's anointed. And I, this is something that we need to pay attention to. But how, look at how the men who supported Saul and his lies, now they're all lying there dead. Yeah. And the kingdom's about to go up. They could have been a part of the kingdom that's going to go up. But because they gave a loyalty to somebody who didn't carry the fruit of God, then that was a problem. And uh, obviously, you know, now they're sitting there. So, any, do y'all have anything to add to that? No. Okay. Let's, let's go to uh, verse 7. Will you read that? Sure. When Israel's fighting men who were on the other side of the valley and those who were on the other side of the Jordan saw that Israel's fighting men fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the cities and fled. So the Philistines came and lived in them. The following day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent them into the land of the Philistines, round about. Okay, so before we go any further, I want you to see something. The same spirit of ungodliness was in the land in the time of the Philistines that cut off people's heads and then displayed them publicly to make, you know, to make fun of them in this way. This is a spirit. Mm-hmm. This is a spirit that's being dealt with mm-hmm. here. 
They're, you know, they're, they're taking Saul, they're making fun of him, they're showing him. Now, this was a common practice then to, you know, David cut off Goliath's head and he showed it. Say, look, this is the one that you feared so greatly. All right, but then you see that they're not just, they're not just showing Saul as being dead. Yeah. They're making fun of it in this way. And so, all right, go ahead. Keep, go back to verse 9. Yes, sir. They cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent them into the land of the Philistines round about to make it known in the house of their idols and among their people. So see, they're showing it. Watch, you're seeing that they're showing this in front of their idols. So who's getting the glory for this? The idols and not God. And so you can tell how off it is in this moment, okay? They put his armor in the house of Ashtoreth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. When the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night, and they took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and they came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they mourned fasting for seven days. Okay, so what you see here, I like this, is you see a loyalty and an honor mm -hmm. where all the valiant men, they heard about what they did to Saul. And, and I want you to notice, notice this. It says that all the, um, when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul. Yeah. In other words, they were like, that's not right. That's not something they should be doing. And we want to do something about it. It's, yeah. it's, that's not honorable. That's not loyal. In other words, they had gone a step beyond. They had gone beyond what they should have done. Okay, you won the victory. You, you, know, you killed the king uh, that was your enemy. But now you went beyond. And they, when they heard what they did to Saul, I want you to see this. And all of a sudden, loyalty rose up in these men. Do you know what it took to walk into enemy territory to get the body of Saul? Yeah. You know, when you walk in loyalty, God will back you. Yeah. When you walk in loyalty and honor, God will back you. Yeah. Please put that in the comments. When you walk in loyalty and honor, God will back you. Yeah. And I've watched this so many times. God will back people. God will support them. God mm -hmm. will protect them, yeah. those that are loyal. But if you don't, there's no promise of that protection. You step out. When you step out from, watch this. When you step out from loyalty and honor, you step out from God. Yeah. When you step out from loyalty and honor, you yeah. step out from the covering of God. Mm -hmm. And this is very important for us to understand. And I'll, I think it's so important today that people do not understand the power of loyalty and honor in, in our society today. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, yeah. I remember when I was a kid... You would hear people would start with one company and um, work for a company. They'd work for that company their whole life and then retire for that company. And it, they would work for that company for 50 years. And today, that is unheard of. Yeah. Nobody, the employee or the employer, employer, nobody has that kind of loyalty basically in our society today yeah. for the most part. So when you see this, you want, to, you want to understand that is not God that's operating like that. That is an uh, ungodly thought. That's an ungodly uh, thing that's going on. That's an ungodly characteristic to have a lack of loyalty and honor. Yeah. But loyalty and honor says, look, I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to support you. So even, for example, even what you see in, in David, we're getting ready to see it, is when you see in David a loyalty and honor, even in death, David honors Saul. Mm -hmm. He has a loyalty to him. Even in death, David honors Saul. This is a beautiful thing, but people don't see this and they don't understand it. And in today's society, we, we don't want to honor people in, in our country. We don't want to honor people that are our neighbors. Uh, we just, we've been concerned about us. We need to put loyalty and honor back on. You realize, if you put loyalty and honor back on, we have no problem going on in our country right now. Mm -hmm. 
There's no need. If we, if, if we had loyalty and honor in the people, there would be no need for Black Lives Matter. There yeah. would be no need for Antifa. There would be no need for riots. There would be no need for anybody that's coming against them because loyalty and honor would supersede all of that. You know, a loyalty and honor to people. How about loyalty and honor to God? Love thy neighbor as thyself mm -hmm. is the second commandment. And it's, it's like the other one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If we had loyalty and honor to God, we would honor his commandment to love our neighbor as ourself. And we wouldn't be racist. We wouldn't be doing these things. Yeah. We need to learn some loyalty and honor again today. You know, and I'm talking to everybody on both yeah. on both sides of the aisle. We need to learn some loyalty and honor today. And it that's God. Yeah. God's, God's for the people. And he's for the people operating. When we operate in God, things always work. And if we don't operate in God, they don't work. Yeah. But we're called to do it. We need to be a loyal and honor, honorable people. Well, when we honor one another, we are honoring God. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And I think it's so easy to make that make a separation where there's not a separation. You know, I'm going to honor the Lord. I'm going to honor God. But I'm not going to honor this person who's annoying me. They're not God. But they're made in the image and likeness of God. They're his children. He sent yes. his son to die for them. Like my... If I'm not honoring Buddy, I'm not honoring the Lord because he loves Buddy. If yeah. I'm not honoring That's you, right. then That's I'm right. not honoring the Lord, not only as a person, but then as a gift like yes. to the body. Like there's there's level of, it doesn't matter if you like the person or not. It doesn't matter if they're an authority and you agree with them or not. It's honoring the Lord. I don't care if you like the president or not. We're still called to honor him and pray for him because that's honoring God in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Hey, Pastor John from Gabon, good to see you. I love you. I love you. All right, so now let's look at, let's look at the second book of Samuel in chapter 1. And let's, let's start in verse 1. Will you read that? Sure. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when, David, when he came to David that he fell on the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, uh, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said, so David, David just, can you imagine what David's feeling right now? Mm -hmm. You know of David's honor towards Saul. And you're, yeah. I'm going to show you something here, but you also know of his love for Jonathan. Yeah. And it's, it's an amazing thing. It was a covenant. Too. It was like, a covenant. He just realized his covenant brother mm -hmm. has passed. And... Mm -hmm the king of Israel. You see, he was more, you know, please hear this. He believed in Israel and he believed, he believed in the appointment of God. Yeah. And the leader of Israel, watch this, the leader of the country, even though the leader of the country was against David and trying to kill him, it was something that meant something to the honorable heart of David. Mm -hmm. yeah. It meant something. It represented something. Mm -hmm. It represented things. This, this is one of those things, loyalty and honor, that we need to recognize. He said, look, this guy was called and anointed by the Lord. He represents the king of my country. And even though he's trying to kill me, it's important. We're going to see why in just a second. Well, it, it reminds me of Je like when Jesus came to the earth, he didn't consider, like, equality with God a thing to be grasped. You know, David, right. this whole time, like, David is going to be the king. Like, he's going to be that king. Yeah. And yet he released that dream while mm -hmm. Saul had it. Yeah. Like he, he wasn't grasping at it. His next response isn't, it's mine, praise yeah. Finally, he's, he mourns. Like, he had that heart. He allowed, he didn't allow his personal... Things to drive him out of honor. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Read, uh, start with verse 4 again, please. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. 
And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on the Mount Gilboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear, and indeed the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Uh, he said to me again, Please stand over me, kill me, for anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. So I stood over him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Okay. So now we know, based off of what we just read in the previous chapter, this is not true. Um, this guy's telling a lie because Saul fell on his own sword. This guy did not kill him. So what is this guy doing? Well, he's trying to position himself. You see this again, this, this building up of your own house. Mm -hmm. it, it's not going to end well for this guy. It, he's trying to build his own house. He's trying to tell how good he was to the king that will come up next. Mm -hmm. He's trying to put himself in a position. And uh, he says, you know, hey, I killed him so that he wouldn't be in agony anymore and that he wouldn't be taken captive. And uh, I killed him. All right, we know that's not true. So he lied trying to get yeah. a position and trying to seek a place of honor. Watch this. Trying to seek a place of honor by building his own house, trying to seek a place of honor by lying, yeah. by doing something dishonorable. Yeah. Many, and this is deception. This is, this is where deception comes in. People, I, I've watched people do this so many times. We have a culture and we have a society of disloyalty and dishonor, and we need to reject that. We need to renounce that and step into the honor and the loyalty of God and do things right because they're right. Yeah. He's okay. to build the own house. It is. It, it's tr he's trying to build his own house here, and it's, it's not going to go well. Yeah. Well, I don't think people realize how demonic um, rebellion and disloyalty yeah. is. I mean, if I, I was reading... Uh, it's a great point. Uh, what's his face? John Bevere. Um, I was reading his book Undercover, and in that book, he, book. he he shares the um, he shares that um, in in Satanism, they'll actually teach you that if you want to rise in the ranks, if you want to grow in power in in the in Satanism, you like they'll teach you rebel against authority, dishonor authority, rebel against the government, rebel against your parents, rebel yeah. against all these things. And the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. So, like, so rebellion or disloyalty. I mean, so, uh, David wasn't rising a rebellion out of, no, no, he was just, like, people were just flocking to him, yeah. and he was doing everything he could to honor, honor King yes. Saul. And, and, so, and so it's important for us, you know, to recognize the importance of, of honoring, especially those that God has placed over us. Yeah. Uh, you know, because dishonor and disloyalty is is just is as the sin of witchcraft. Yes. It, it's, it's wicked in the eyes of God, and, and we don't recognize that because it's become so ingrained in our culture today yeah. where, like, you can't have a convers you can barely have a conversation without hearing someone dishonor or disrespect. Yes. You know, uh, like, you, you watch t TV. You know, you watch the Disney Channel. The kids are brilliant. The parents are stupid. Yeah. yeah. We're just developing this idea of, well, you're a kid, you're prob your parents don't really know anything. Right. You watch adult sitcoms, the, the wife is brilliant, the husband's an idiot. Yeah. You know, it's just you're exactly like, right. it, it's, it's like structured to set up to, to make us, you know. Rebellious. Rebellious yeah. in our minds. Right. Yeah. And, and it's something that we really need to fight against. It's um, true. And, and especially just the way we talk about those that God has placed in authority over us, our boss, our pastor, our, um, our president, all yeah. these different things. We have to be careful the way we talk about them. Mm -hmm. Because then, because, and this is one of the things that God really showed me th as I was reading through that book and just studying it out myself, is that if I'm, if I'm using my, my words to dishonor and disrespect authority, those who, who, got, who God has given me authority over will inevitably dishonor and disrespect me. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm giving them an example of, oh, you know, your words aren't that important. You can just really say whatever you want against authority. And then they'll, yeah. they'll learn that from me yeah. and then point that directly at me. And yeah. it's important for us. You know, like if, if as a 
if you're a parent, you know, it's important to, to honor and respect your pastors, your bosses, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. C because your kids will be hearing that. Yeah. And, and then and then in turn, they'll be turning that back, you know. It's, it's like the story I shared, I think, last week where I've watched people, mm -hmm. parents, who talk bad to their kids and then their kids need about a spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. I've seen it against me mm -hmm. where they've talked and said, no, that guy's crazy. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're doing crazy stuff. And then the very power to set them free is sitting here, but their kids will never come yeah. uh, because their parents have spoken against that. And I've watched yeah. that. And I had... You know, I've had uh, multiple times where I've watched a president, just he's a president of the country. I've had multiple times where, multiple presidents, where mm -hmm. a president does something ungodly. Mm -hmm. And I just start talking about, bah, 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 bah. you know, this has been some years ago now, but I, you know, talking about it. And the Lord checked me and he said, I don't care if you like him or, or not, I don't care. That's the president, and don't speak in rebellion is yeah. basically what he was saying. Yeah. Don't speak in rebellion. Don't speak in dishonor. And what is that doing? It's not that what the, the leader is doing is right. Yeah. It's that his wrong doesn't give me a right, right. to be wrong and go into a rebellious mindset and rebellious speech. Well, you've, you've taught it on here before, you know, there's a rank structure in the kingdom and there's a way there are processes and systems to how the Lord operates. Yeah. So I know for me, when George and I got married, I, I didn't understand submission and authority the way I thought it did. I had a mental understanding, but in practice, I didn't do it well. And you had a theory. I bet you didn't have a diagram. I didn't have a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Sure didn't. Therefore, the theory wasn't really a good theory. True, yet. it wasn't. <laughs> but you'd have to be watching earlier to get that. <laughs> but I like our first year and a half was, you know, it was it was a treat. Um, it, not, and I'm sure it wasn't for Pastor because they had to do the counseling through it. But <laughs> but what it boiled down to is I was trying. It was good to, times. It, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trying to take authority that wasn't mine and it wasn't working because I wasn't anointed to do it. So when the, when rebellion is what pushes us, what that is, is that's the enemy trying to get us in a place where God can't work through us. Like, not the way that he wants to. I may be able to do some things, but not the way that George is anointed to do them because yeah. he's my husband. And so there's, yeah. a, there's a position there. Same with you. If I'm trying to take the authority of the pastor, it's not going to work for me because it's yours sure. and it's not mine. So it'll get following rebellion and that witchcraft, it cuts off God's ability to be who he wants to be on our behalf yeah. to the full degree that he wants to do it. Yeah, amen. There's, we need to watch that. We need to watch our heart. We need to watch our words and our, in our honor and in our loyalty. We need to watch those things yeah. and not, you know, what good does it do? What, what good does it do uh, for us really to talk bad? You it know, doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, now, if we're sitting here discussing and trying to figure out, is this right or not, that's a different situation. But then once we figure out what it is and we continue to talk bad, now we've crossed over into a rebellion when we're speaking of leaders in that way. And uh, we have to watch that. We have to be mindful. And again, we give our loyalty and our honor to God. And so God is what you do godly, mm -hmm. you know, or what you do godly, or what I do godly. Uh, so we give our loyalty and our honor to those godly things, mm -hmm. but not we don't support those things that are ungodly. Yeah. And so this guy's sitting here, he's lying, and yeah. he's trying to promote himself. He thinks that he thinks this is the right thing to do. Watch. He thinks that this disloyal action is the right thing to do and tell to a very loyal, godly thinking person. Mm -hmm. And he is wrong. Uh, so... Uh, read, uh, so he tells how Saul and Jonathan were dead, and he tells how he helped Saul uh, end his life by killing him. And then verse 11. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes and tore them, and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Now watch this. 
Saul dies. You would think that most people who had Saul had been hunting them down, trying to kill them now for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Saul thought that these men, when he dies, David's men and David will be you know, in complete celebration. Mm -hmm. But what was actually happening was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. They were mourning the king and his son dying. Not just David, but David and all his men. All of them took their clothes and ripped it, mm -hmm. ripped them. This is, look, now I want you to see the mindset of one leader. Mm -hmm. You remember these same men wanted David to kill Saul, mm -hmm. but the mindset of godliness, of one good leader, of loyalty and honor, has now gotten into all the men. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten into all the men. A good leader will pass on godly mindsets. Mm -hmm. Please put that in the comments. Good. A good leader yeah. will pass on Godly mindsets. A good leader will pass on godly mindsets. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of things that we need to always be thinking towards. You know, are my actions as a leader, are my actions passing on godly things or ungodly things? Yeah. You know, because if my actions are not passing on godly things, then it's not actions I need to take. Are my actions passing on godly things or ungodly things? Yeah. And so I love this, how David was so honorable and so loyal that when they got news, all the men ripped their clothes. And not only that, they mourned, they wept, yeah. and they fasted until the evening. Yeah. Mo what would most people be doing today? Most people would be going, good riddance. It'd be a long Facebook post about it. Yeah, think about when, think about in America right now. It, whenever the president that you didn't vote for gets out of office, what are most people doing? Good riddance. Now I understand that not every president has was anointed by God to be there, but we need to watch the attitude. That's the attitude that accompanies devils, mm -hmm. not godliness. Yes. Yeah. That's the attitude that's accompanied by devils, not godliness. So we need to watch that mindset and watch that heart. This is a loyalty to the things of God. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that they're a good person. Saul was not doing a great job. But we have to watch in ourselves that heart or else we can easily fall down a slippery slope and all of a sudden we find ourselves out of godliness. The very thing that we were railing against, we're there because we yeah. wouldn't check ourselves. Yeah. All right. Well, disloyalty breeds division. Yes. You know, and obviously, like you can see, especially through like so much of what Jesus prayed and preached, is that God wants unity. Mm -hmm. Unity is at the heart of the Father. Yeah. And, and disloyalty breeds division. And the Bible talks like it, I forget where it was, but like there in within the list of sins, right next to witchcraft, right next to you know, all the things that we, yeah. we recognize that there's division and dissension, you know. Yeah. And you see that, especially like when we talk, start talking about politics. You're either one way or another way, and then there's like division. You, yeah. People can't really have political discussions without there being division, you know. Yes. Thrown, and, w yes. and what we don't recognize is that that's, that that's a spirit, and that's not a godly spirit. That's right. The division that's is exactly a sin. That's exactly right. And you see it in the church, you know, where, where people get disloyal, and, and when they s s split off, you know, they'll try to take people with them. You yeah. know, it's, 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 it's a demonic thing. And mm -hmm. you, Paul talks about it in, in uh, one of his letters to the Corinthians, you know, that, that, I, that he wants them all to be, you know, in unity and to yeah. agree according to the doctrines. And that's just something that you don't see as much today. Yeah. And, and it's a demonic thing where the, that's what the enemy thrives on is division. Yes. He wants to divide families. He wants to divide churches. He wants to divide nations, you yeah. know. He knows that a divided family, a divided nation will fall. Yeah. And he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So mm -hmm. while he's pushing so hard towards division, we should be pushing so hard towards unity mm -hmm. and uh, being one in the Lord. But mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't see, you see people wanting to uphold yeah. uh, their part that environment and their atmosphere has taught them instead of upholding this godly part. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah. did you have anything? So, yeah. Okay, so I want you to see this. Verse 12, they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the people of the Lord and the house of Israel. 
See, all of, the people of the Lord, the house of Israel, Saul, not necessarily Jonathan, but they represent the ones that were coming after him trying to kill him. Yeah. That's who they represented. Mm -hmm. And he says, and they mourned them all. Verse 13, David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of an alien and a Malachite. Oh, that means not from that land, not from, not from Mars. Not from Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just helping people, helping people out, not, not to claiming you a not to form <laughs> theories. Because imagine they could draw some pictures to go along with that one. Area 51. <laughs> I have some theories about it. Wait till the Verse 14. <laughs> <laughs> then David said, How is it that you were not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy the Lord's anointing? Mm -mm. Uh oh. You done messed up, eh, Abram? Look, look at the heart. <laughs> you done messed up, eh, Abram? <laughs> look, this man, I was reading through these two chapters and reviewing them again this morning. I just started weeping yeah. at the heart of David, who hears this, hears this man who's trying mm -hmm. to kill him, mm -hmm. and he talks to this guy and says, how were you not afraid to lift your hand to God's anointing? See, he's not necessarily you know, honoring Saul. He's honoring the anointing that yeah. was on Saul at yeah. one time. He's honoring God in that, and he's saying to this guy, how have you not honored yeah. God's hand? How have you not done it? Do you think that you did right? Mm -hmm. And obviously he didn't. And, but look at the heart on David. Yeah. What made him the great king? What made him be a, a part in the first verse of the new covenant of Jesus Christ? Yeah. The King David, of the lineage of David, the great king. This heart right here. Lord, I honor you. I'm loyal to you. I will, I will do what you want to do. Lord, I give myself to you. It didn't mean David didn't have mess ups, but this is the prevailing heart in him. This yeah. is what drove him. Lord, I'm yours. Everything you want to do, I'm about. I love you and I will honor you. So much so. David, verse 15, David called one of the young men and said, go cut them down. <laughs> cut them down. Kill them. He who's touched the Lord's anointed. So the man struck him and, they, and he died. Verse 16, David said to him, your blood is on your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. If he'd have just told the truth, he'd have been fine. Mm -hmm. But he lied about it, trying to promote himself in front of the king, and it cost him his life, trying to build his own house. Mm -hmm. Then, verse 17, David chanted with this lament over Saul and Jonathan his son, and he told them to teach the sons of Judah the song of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. If you go over to 2 Samuel 2 and verse 4, and the men of Judah came and there anointed David king over the house of Judah. Okay. And so, so now we move in the man who would be king, we move from the shepherd boy to the wilderness, now to the man who's anointed to be king. And I look forward to getting into it. And thank you for being with us this far. It's going to be a good rest of the series. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the man now in action as king. He's been called. He's been prepared. He's given himself to the Lord. He's walked out loyalty. He's walked out honor. And now he's about to be the king and fulfill his destiny. Mm -hmm. hmm. We love you. Father, I just pray right now. Let us have a heart and a mind of loyalty and honor. Let us have a heart and a mind set after you, going after you in everything that we do. Lord, let us see where we've missed it. Let us repent from those things. Let our eyes of understanding be enlightened so that we can be a godly person yes. of loyalty and honor that doesn't have even a hint of rebellion in our thoughts or in our heart. Lord, let us be like you 
in loyalty and honor. And we thank you for modeling it. Thank you, Lord, for giving us men like David who will wear it so well. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. And we give you the glory. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. And thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. And thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we receive loyalty and honor. In Jesus' name, we praise you, we worship you, we give you the glory. Amen. 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 We love you so much. Share the broadcast if you haven't done it already. And if you'd like to sow today, you're welcome to sow into the gospel. Uh, you can type in the comments, hashtag donate on Facebook. And uh, <laughs> you, you like doing that. That's good. Can... Hashtag. Octothorpe donate. Donate. And. Right. Or, or, or givebc.org. Give there. Very well. Right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Y'all are so good. You're, that's amazing. Hey, I'll give you $10 if you can get your hands in front of the white banner. You should try. <laughs> you should try a lot. <laughs> Be committed. I know how science works. <laughs> you have a theory on it? I have a theory. <laughs> We love y'all so much. We'll see you next next week. Lunch plus. Join and, in. And new stuff is coming, so get new ready for stuff. that. It's exciting. We'll share more with you very soon, but get prepped. It's going to be great. We love you very much. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Look for the new stuff. Probably in a couple of weeks, we'll start unveiling some stuff. We love you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.